Okay, so we're back today on um, uh, a webinar with me. I'm Renee and I am a registered dietitian here in Vancouver, BC. I mainly focus on helping people with diabetes and how to prevent diseases. And today's topic is heart disease and that kind of envelops um, a lot of things that we've already talked about in my last few presentations and mainly I want to also like reiterate how important it is for healthy eating and adapting a lifestyle and also have fun. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, okay. Um, actually, if Karina, you can allow me to share my screen. That would be... Uh, something that I need I forgot to ask you we also have Karina here helping me with um, some of the technical um, uh, uh, functions on zoom and I just really need to um, share my screen and we can go into the webinar se session Okay, so here we go, perfect. And we can play, oops, let's go from the beginning. All right, so those of you who have been following us in the last few weeks know who I am already. I'm a registered dietitian. I have a master's in clinical nutrition. I practiced in a lot of different fields in, um, in uh, acute care, cardiac rehab. I also did, um, uh, cancer uh, and um, uh, long-term care and uh, I love sharing recipes and how I came back from uh, New York and Hong Kong from all my culinary adventures and clinical work and now I run my own business in Vancouver doing um, cooking classes as well as uh, food product line called True Nosh. So those of you who have questions can type it in the comment section. And if you think of other things later that um, come to your mind, you can always email me at info at truenosh.com. All right, so our topic today is a healthy heart. Very important. Um, so you can know your heart. It is the size of a fist and it is in your chest and it's protected by your ribs and your breastbone called the sternum. Um, how it works, it actually helps deliver oxygen to your body, basically uh, circulating oxygen and nutrients all over your body with the blood um, by pumping. Um, and it takes also once when the blood circulates, it also helps takes waste products and carbon dioxide and helps you with every function in your body, like breathing and muscle um, contractions and also waste excretion, right? And how that works, arteries carry this nutrition and, and oxygen in the blood and veins carry them back to the heart and lungs and then the whole circle um, functions like that every day, every moment and um, even when you sleep, your heart doesn't stop. Why we're talking about this topic today? Well, heart disease is the number one killer of Canadians, not just Canadians, mostly North Americans. And a few reasons why, well, we are increasing in age, the baby boomers are now in retirement. And then as we age, our heart kind of is one of the first things that we really need to take care of. A lot of times unhealthy eating habits also pertain to increasing heart disease. Low physical activity, a lot of people don't really go out and do things with their body anymore. A lot of jobs, you know, you're required to sit at home in front of the computer or being on the phone or just, you know, um, not really moving so much. And that is uh, a very big concern for heart disease. And a lot of these things, um, you know, help increase the number of people uh, having obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. So hypertension is another word for high blood pressure. We talked about that in uh, some of our previous sessions, and I um, want you to see other uh, videos that I've recorded in the Connectra's website if you need a review. I'll do some review today also. 
So heart disease, I abbreviate it here as HD, and some causes. Well, one, high blood pressure. Another one, cholesterol. And those go hand in hand um, because if you have high blood cholesterol, um, your arteries tend to uh, uh, have a uh, deposit plaque in, in it and the high blood pressure, your blood pressure rises, causing um, uh, a lot of stress on your heart. Another cause is diabetes and, and also sometimes during pregnancy, women also have high blood pressure. Another term for that is preeclampsia and sleep apnea. So a lot of um, people who have uh, problems sleeping, they tend to not be able to breathe correctly when they're sleeping. So if you tend to not have um, a good quality sleep, maybe you really need to go and, um, and uh, consult a doctor to see what things you can do to help your sleep. And lifestyle risk factors also happen to be a factor um, and healthy diet, as I said. Not enough physical activity also reiterated again. Unhealthy weight, I'll go into that in, in a later slide. And smoking, yeah, so smoking and too much alcohol leads to heart disease. And nowadays we're also in a high stress period, right? It's a very different time. Um, people are more worried because of coronavirus and we really don't know when we can get a cure or a vaccine. So stress also is a risk factor. Um, and some drug use and birth control can also lead to some risks in having um, heart disease, okay? And how doctors uh, diagnose heart disease, there's so many things that you can look at. Um, for example, your medical history and your family history. So some people who have um, family members who have heart disease have to be more alert and have to go and, and make sure that um, they are looking after themselves properly. So a complete physical exam annually really helps out with um, the uh, the uh, your health so to know exactly what's going on in your um, um, body so I'm actually gonna go and, and turn off something in the back so I can uh, concentrate on this okay. all right sorry I'm back. Okay. And some tests that you can do as a doctor. Um, so it depends on your signs and symptoms. Um, everybody has a different body. So you really have to go in and talk to your doctor about your symptoms and what you're experiencing, right? And as I said last uh, week, getting your blood tests with um, um, your blood panel, you can ask for cholesterol, triglycerides, also take a look at your blood pressure and your, your blood sugar and also your sodium and other electrolytes that, um, that might be um, a concern for your doctor. And if, if uh, your blood comes, your blood uh, uh, tests come back irregular, your doctor might ask you to go and test uh, your heart a little bit further and you might be uh, going to a, a cardiologist and they'll hook you up to a machine and you'll get a electrocardiogram or ECG or EKG and that's when they check your electrical signals in your heart, okay? And then another way that you can do, uh, and you can kind of self-diagnose when you're um, alone at home, you can also uh, check out your own heart rate by pressing onto your artery or on your wrist and counting the amount of beats per minute. And I will also talk about that in, in a future slide about how you can um, learn about your heart rate. So uh, let's go further into knowing more about your heart. It is a muscle and its job is to pump blood around your body. So how many beats a day? It's relatively different for different people. And also um, if you're a man and woman, it also changes, but it's, it averages about a um, hundred thousand times a day. And that's a lot for your, your heart to of, of a lot of work for your heart. Um, so you really want to, you know, be 
good to your body so then your your heart doesn't have to work too hard and it pumps blood through the arteries and veins and the normal resting heart rate is usually in between 60 to 100 beats per minute and that's a really wide range and if you're really interested in knowing what the average heart rate for you is, um, you can go on HealthLink BC or you can call 811 and they'll tell you. Um, but there's a really good calculator on HealthLink BC and you can enter your age and it will spit out your heart rate. And you can also, you know, follow the guidelines there. And I, I recommended you to go on their website and you can um, follow their guidelines to see um, your resting heart rate for 10 minutes. Um, and they'll, they'll also um, be able to... Um, uh, have more information on their website to see how you can um, use these results to um, go and talk to your doctor about your uh, symptoms and some of your worries that you might um, be thinking about after knowing your heart rate. And some other test results. This um, week we are kind of doing a, a summary of the things that we've talked about earlier. We had a, um, a session about sodium, we had a session about um, how, how to uh, uh, control your blood sugars and also how to um, control and manage cholesterol. And these are just some uh, summary that I've taken from my previous sessions with you, and I will reiterate it again. So your cholesterols and your tri triglycerides, and these are your blood tests that you're going to request from your doctor. And you want to look at your cholesterol. It should be under 5.2 millimoles per liter. That's an ideal. And if it's above 6.2, it's usually considered high. And you want to work on increasing your fiber. And everyone should be working on increasing your fiber, even if you don't have high cholesterol. Fiber is great, helping your digestive system actually also um, helps you um, make some essential fatty acids. And then um, you also want to look at your HDL levels that should be more than 0.9 and your LDL levels and that should be less than 3.5. Um, that more information about cholesterol has, uh, uh, you can review my, my session uh, two weeks ago and um, and if you have more questions you can also email me or type it in the comment section. Electrolytes, so uh, some uh, things like sodium, potassium, calcium chloride, and phosphate, those are things that um, your, your doctor will look in your blood test to see um, if anything else needs to be tested. Blood sugar is important. Those who have um, diabetes uh, should look for a A1C, which is your um, um, uh, sugar that is um, attached to your, your red blood cells. And that is a percentage and, and should be under seven for those who have diagnosed diabetes. Pre-diabetics, so um, if you are worried and you have a higher risk of getting diabetes, you should really look at um, being under six or 6.4 is kind of the, the borderline. And for normal people, you should, uh, if you are interested, A1C is not a normal test, but if you are interested in knowing, request that from your doctor and it should come out to be under 5.7. Uh, All right, and then the fasting glucose is usually like two hours after, um, or like, you know, if you're not eating for a while, your fasting glucose is a uh, four to seven. If it's like a postprandial, which is after eating two hours, it should be also um, within that range. If you are normal, if you have diabetes, you should also um, look at those ranges. It should be under um, uh, about eight or so. It depends on um, what level of diabetes you're at and um, what sort of medications you're taking also. And this you would have to talk with your doctor about um, to normalize your, your fasting glucose and, and your postprandial, which is the, the glucose reading after two, two hours after eating a meal, right? Um, and then your weight. So uh, some 
um, people are asking me, well, what's a healthy, healthy weight? Well, we can check your BMI, as you can see, it's sort of really your height and your weight, but that also really depends on your, your lean body mass, right? If you have a lot of muscle, your muscle will weigh a lot more and um, everyone's also different. So you can uh, consult a dietitian or um, a health profession to help you understand your BMI. And then the waist, um, the inches on your waist also has a, an effect on um, your risk of getting heart disease. For women, your waist should be about 35 inches or lower. So 35 inches is the borderline cutoff. And for men, that's a little bit um, more lenient and you have 40 inches. So if you're close to that, like you don't wanna wait until you're 35 or 40 inches um, in order to be worried if if you want to it's more about prevention and what you're going to do now to not get to that borderline reading right and steps you can take so a balanced diet and an active lifestyle you all know this i don't really need to reiterate it but you have to hold yourself accountable right and prevention is key. And this slide is actually taken from the Heart and Stroke Foundation. You need to learn more about living a healthier lifestyle. And you can find help on websites such as Heart and Stroke Foundation, um, HealthLink BC, and um, Health Canada. So there are a lot of things that you can look for online. And also um, if you call 811, which is a, a local number that's free, and you can request to talk to a health professional there. There are eight and 10 cases of premature heart disease and strokes are, 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 are things that you can prevent by changing your lifestyle and behavior. And you can do this for sure by choosing your own health, you can eat well, read labels. I'm going to also reiterate the uh, nutrition label in the next slide and know your ingredients, right? You want to know, put good things in your body and be happy about the things that you're eating. Maintaining a healthy weight, I said before, check your BMI. It should be about 25 and lower than 30. If you're reaching that higher mark, you need to change your lifestyle habits. Um, and stop smoking. If you're a smoker, you know, you don't have to stop right away, but you have to look at things and how you can decrease the amount of cigarettes you're, you're uh, smoking a day. And then eventually you'll get there. It's all about baby steps. And there is a lot of help um, out there if you really want to go um, and, and get some help with quitting smoking. And uh, just, you know, Google help quit smoking and there should be a lot of resources out there that can help you. And managing your stress. Um, some people do meditation, go to yoga class, or even just some breathing exercises that you can do at home. Slowing down your breathing and you can count about uh, up to like four or five, inhaling four seconds and then exhaling four seconds. And then the next breath, maybe elongating that an extra second. And that can really help with your management of stress. And with that can also lower your risks of heart disease. And try to have fun, right? Um, you know, even work can be fun. So you have to kind of look at the lighter side of things and be willing to um, see the other side and also be willing to understand that having fun is really choosing a healthy stance in your, your lifestyle. And once again, this is your friend, the nutrition facts table, and that should be on every packaged food item um, in the grocery store. And you really wanna look at fat, you wanna look at saturated and trans fat, you make sure those are at a minimum level. And cholesterol, most plant foods have zero cholesterol, but I said earlier in one of my presentations, um, even in even plant foods can cause higher cholesterol because it's used differently in everybody's bodies, right? So um, you wanna minimize your cholesterol intake. Sodium levels before it was one teaspoon. So in my um, presentation, one teaspoon of uh, salt is really your whole day's worth of intake, right? And you really don't, you don't want to have too much salt 
and some um, uh, tips I um, gave you earlier was to choose herbs and spices that you can add to your foods while you're cooking instead of choosing salt, okay? And then carbohydrates because, um, you know, carbs tend it tend to turn into blood sugars relatively quickly, but with the amount of dietary fiber, you can actually use that as leverage. So right in this nutritional facts table, you can actually take 37 and minus four grams, and that will be your total net carbs. And your fiber is really your best friend in this case, in every case. Um, fiber is really my best friend for any food that I have. And if you have um, some psyllium or metamucil, I did a presentation a few um, sessions ago on how to make a sauce with some psyllium fiber that can really help you increase your dietary fiber intake. And then protein. Protein can also stop, um, uh, not really stop, but help, help uh, slow down your digestion and also have more um, uh, nutrition, nutritional um, value in the food that you are buying. Okay, so this is my last slide and this is basically uh, what I say after each presentation, it is not just about one nutri nutrient, um, it's the bigger picture, right? Adding physical activity to your daily routine, stop, stop smoking, regulate your alcohol intake, and, and things that are on the label like low fat. Um, can be deceiving because you will gravitate towards it without understanding how much carbs there are in there, how much sugar and sodium is in that product. So something that says low fat might not be as healthy as you think it is. And understand what um, ingredients and, and the nutrition facts label is very important. And there we go. So we're going to go back and we're going to share some recipes today. Are there any questions that I need to know with um, our audiences right now? I see there are three attendees. Hi, Amy, Elizabeth, and Lori. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate your time. And we're going to come to my kitchen. I'm going to show you a few things today that are quite exciting. Um, and I always tell people they don't have to um, not eat their favorite foods, but it's more about what, what to incorporate in their foods to make it more nutritional. Uh, higher in, in um, protein and fiber and whatnot, right? I will sh uh, share two recipes with you. One's a sweet one, actually. And we're coming to the end of spring and we're going to be embracing a lot of different fruits and vegetables that are coming into the grocery stores. I have some frozen blueberries that I had from last year and I only have very, very little left. So I can't wait for blueberry season. So the best way to preserve, you know, fruits that are, are um, in abundance in the summer is to freeze them. And that's what I did. So I have some really beautiful BC grown blueberries and then also some um, uh, strawberries. And these are wonderful um, berries that have a lot of antioxidants and, and different um, colors also will let you know um, that you are ingesting different antioxidants because that's what makes the fruit colorful. As well as fiber, you know, the seeds in, in them and also the skin also provide a lot of fiber. So we're going to actually make a, uh, a jam or compote, as I would say, with uh, the mixed berries. I'm going to put it on a uh, skillet, so it's actually going to cook um, relatively quick. So I'm just going to put both in one skillet at a time and then turn it on high heat. You can add a little bit of water, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put um, about half a cup of water in my uh, skillet and let it boil. And 
And you do want to uh, keep watch on these fruits because it can burn quite easily. So a little bit of water will help. And then when the fruits are cooking, I'm going to see if I can cut up a few dates. And that would also help um, with the fiber and also help with the sweetness of the jam. And as I said, I don't use any sugars, so some dates will help that out. It really depends on how many dates you want. If your fruits are not sweet enough, you can add a few more. But usually, if you're freezing your fruits at the, you know, the, the ripest, it should be sweet enough. You might not even need to add dates, okay? And some spices I'm gonna use today in my compote is cinnamon. Cinnamon is great for anything um, sweet because it actually is a blood sugar regulator, so it actually helps you absorb sugar a little bit slower. It doesn't act, stop you from absorbing sugar, but it actually slows it down so that you don't peak. Um, and then also a little bit turmeric. Um, turmeric is anti, <coughs> sorry, anti-inflammatory. So you can help, um, you know, your, your compote by adding different spices. And if you like spicy, you can go ahead and add some chili powder too, and that will be very exciting for whatever you're eating with. This compote can last um, uh, a while. If you're jarring, you can um, buy some of those jars with the metal lid, and um, once you finish jarring it, you can boil it for 10 minutes, and that will last a full year, or even longer, right? If you want to last a little bit longer, you can actually add a little bit of lemon juice or some apple cider vinegar, and that will dec decrease the pH of your compote, and it can help you um, you know, store that uh, jam or uh, compote a little bit longer at a time. Um, so I'm just going to eyeball about a teaspoon of cinnamon into my compote right now. And I love the smell of cinnamon. It actually is something that I crave. I make a cereal or a granola. And uh, I add a lot of cinnamon to it because um, I really like the, the smell of cinnamon and, and how functional it is. So this is a, a granola that I make and you can take a look at my website for nutritional information about the granola. All right, and I'm gonna add a little, little, little pinch of salt, which brings out the sweetness of the fruits. Okay, so the pinch is about a quarter teaspoon. You don't even want to add too much of that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep wash on my jam. While I'm gonna turn on a pot of water, so I just have some water in the back burner. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few things that I can do with my noodles. So um, my partner is celiac, so I have these noodles. It's a brown rice spaghetti, and they're um, quite brown. If you have a uh, whole wheat uh, pasta, you can also use that. So I like this brown rice spaghetti because it's got a lot more fiber in it. I'm gonna cook it in the water while I shave down a carrot. Oops, there's like a little bit of, you know, my pot dings when it's ready. So a little bit of carrot, I'm gonna cut off the top so it doesn't end up in my meal and don't need to peel it, honestly. Make sure you scrub it really well with a vegetable scrub and the peel has a lot of antioxidants in it and also fiber. And I bought one of these things. If you don't want to have one of these things, just use a vegetable peeler and then cut them into uh, strings. This one is kind of cool. It reminds me of um, elementary school. And these basically make vegetable noodles, all right? And you can use zucchini, you can use carrots, so basically any vegetable that's long, whoops, and you can just use it like a pencil sharpener, 
and they will give you veggie noodles. And I've also seen squash down this way. You can basically buy um, squash noodles at Save On Foods and Costco, they already have that. Um, but this is quite fun. So if you have kids at home, you can have them do this. And this uh, vegetable, I guess, sharpener or a noodler, what you call it, you can buy it online or at uh, Winners. And um, it's not expensive at all. So I bought this for about $10 and I've been using it for years whenever I make noodles and I want to add some vegetables into it. And this is a lot of fun. And it doesn't take any time whatsoever, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the carrot. You don't really want to cook the carrot for too long. You can want to put the noodles in, have it on boil, and cooking the noodles for um, five minutes should be enough. You also don't want to overcook your noodles. You want to keep a little bit of bite, and that will also help um, with uh, slowing down your um, chewing as well as slowing down your absorption, right? So that's kind of comes off and you can cut the carrot into small bits and you can toss it in your noodles later but this always excites me when i see this so um in one of my slides previously you said i told you guys to have fun and this is my way of having fun with food so i'm going to set this aside carrot only takes three minutes to cook so you want to throw it in uh, at the last minute with your noodles and you can be a carrot noodle combination, okay? And then another thing that you can add um, instead of, you know, more vegetables, you can add some more antioxidants. So I have some goji berries here that I'm going to add to my compote later and, and to increase some texture and color. Um, this is boiling, so I'm going to use a spoon and just help it not stick to the bottom of the pan, okay? And you wanna let it boil until it gets um, like jammy, and then you can turn the heat off and, pu and put it in a uh, glass container. And you can give these as gifts to your friends too, right? So sharing is caring for me, so I always like to cook for people, and if I have extra, I will bring some over and share it with some friends. Okay, so that is underway. And another tip, so I'm gonna stick the carrot noodles aside and I'm gonna talk about how to um, make your rice a little bit more exciting. So in one of my first episodes, I taught you guys how to make a mixed grain rice. So it's one cup of white rice, two, uh, uh, sorry, two cups of white rice, one cup of brown rice, one cup of quinoa, and a uh, quarter cup of flax seeds. That's what I use for my mixed grain rice. You can also jazz it up with other things like adding um, buckwheat groats into your rice or even like green peas into your rice and that will make your rice colorful. And another thing that I like to add to my rice, or you can just eat this as rice, is cauliflower. And if you have a grater, you're gonna use the big grating side and start grating. And if you don't have a grater, you can just chop, chop this cauliflower and make cauliflower rice. And you can add this to your rice at the same time as um, you, you're adding raw rice to your rice cooker or to your bowl, and it will cook at the same time. So now you're gonna add some cauliflower into your rice cooker, and most people don't even notice that there's cauliflower in your rice until you tell them. So it's great to um, you know have kids eat their vegetables when you mix them with the rice. So I'm just going to shave that. Um, I like the shaver because I like to work up my biceps when I'm cooking. <laughs> um, but you can also throw this um, in a blender and it'll you know, chop up your cauliflower really, really quickly. 
without you washing your fingers. Okay, so as you can see, this looks like little granules of rice already, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, once I wash the rice, so this I've already rinsed, wash the rice uh, about two times, um, I'm going to add the same amount of water and then just stir in the cauliflower and put it in my rice cooker or my pot to make rice with some cauliflower in it. And um, it will really increase your nutrition profile. Okay, are there any uh, questions that I need to know of right now? If you, I mean, if Karina, you want to unmute yourself, you can also let me know because I can't really see if they're on uh, Facebook. Nope, I will take it as no if you don't talk to me. And yeah, I guess participants can always um, email me if you um, have any questions. Okay. And you don't have to cook this with like steaming rice. If you have leftover rice, this is the best time to add more vegetables to it. So if you have leftover rice in the fridge, you can make fried rice and you can add um, cauliflower or carrot bits into it and that will um, make your rice really exciting with the different types of colors, right? So this stem makes a perfect um, addition or a perfect way for me to add some carrots into my rice or my noodles later so you don't have to waste anything. And I'm just going to rough chop this guy and we're going to see if there's boiling water. Yep, there's boiling water. I'm going to add the noodles to it and I'm going to set my timer at five minutes. Actually, sorry, at three minutes because at three minutes that's when I'm going to add my carrots. And then I'm going to finish the jam and that really took no time to make. If you want to leave your fruits a little bit more whole, then um, it's fine to just take it off the heat now. If you like it more of a uh, jammy texture, then cook it for a little bit longer. But know that if you cook it a little bit longer, then um, the fiber is going to be cooked down also, right? So I actually like my uh, fruits a little bit more whole to keep the fiber intact and to use it as a sauce. So I make some black bean brownies. You can actually drizzle the sauce over it with um, a little bit of yogurt and that actually makes a really good snack already. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use this. I have the compote or the uh, fruit sauce already cooked. And now I'm gonna get a piece of brownie or you can use, um, a muffin if you're a baker at home and then get some yogurt from your fridge. So I'm a uh, lactose intolerant so I always like to buy alternative yogurts and this is a coconut yogurt alternative. And then I'm just going to get a spoon, add a little bit of granola into it. I see that there are uh, one more audience watching on Facebook. Uh, oh, and for our folks in the Zoom room, if you have any questions for Renee, uh, feel free to put it in the comment. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to crumble some brownie uh, black bean brownie. I will probably share that recipe very soon in another episode. Just spoon in a little bit of yogurt or chia pudding because I taught you guys how to make that also. And then I'm going to spoon in my berry sauce. 
and then use your favorite type of low sugar granola and that will give a great crunch and also add some fiber and then your favorite type of dried high antioxidant fruit and we have a beautiful yogurt bowl here that's already made my timer has gone off for three minutes I'm going to add the carrots into the noodles and let it cook for two minutes. And get a plate ready. And you can add your favorite type of pepper sauce. And um, get ready for lunch. So I'm going to check if see, to see if anybody put in anything in the chat. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my noodles. With some tongs. So as you can see, the carrots are already cooked. As long as it's with the noodles, it doesn't even need two minutes to cook. Because if you cook it too long, then the carrots get too soft. So I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to show you how beautiful carrots make the noodles and if you have a nice sauce or pesto go ahead and drizzle that on with some protein and extra veggies and there you go okay all right thank you amy Thank you for watching. I really, really enjoyed teaching this class too.